planner. That is what we're talking about today. All the tips, the tricks, the hacks, the things that you need to know to achieve that beautiful, flawless self tan. We're going to talk about it today. I got all sorts of ideas for you, things to try. I've been doing this stuff for years, so I got some good stuff here. Before we do that though, we got to get through, you know, the if you like this channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications. That way you never miss an upload. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, hello, hi, welcome. My name's Mary. I'm a Midwesty mom in my 40s, and I love to post all sorts of content about beauty and lifestyle here on YouTube. So if that's what you're into, hit subscribe. Would love to have you. So let's get into it. Let's talk self-tanner, shall we? So if you want to apply self-tanner. Maybe you're a newbie, maybe you're doing it for a long time. There's some things, some techniques and things that you really should be doing in order to make sure that you get a nice, smooth, not blotchy, sunless tan. And it all starts with number one, prep work, body prep work. And excuse me while I, oh, there's my notes. All right, first things first exfoliating. So what I would recommend for exfoliating, you can use any exfoliant that you really like to use. I've used the tree hut stuff in the past. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for this type of application. You don't want to use something that's got lots of like really highly moisturizing oils in it that's going to stay on your skin when you're done, when you step out of the shower. Instead, what I would recommend is you get those exfoliating gloves. Like you can find these things everywhere. Like I found them at like Target, Walmart. I think I've seen them at the Dollar Tree and in my opinion get the crustier rougher ones like the most rough that you can find because you really really want to get in there slough off all those dead skin cells and just really get to a point where you're like stripping all like any leftover lotions or oils or things that you might have on your skin get those off um, also I would recommend using a bar soap again the reason for that I just think that bar soaps are a little bit more stripping on the skin and so for this type of body prep where you want to make sure that your self tanner has a very like clean slate to adhere to you want to make sure that all of those oils lotions whatever are off your skin so use bar soap and those exfoliating gloves and really go to town you know exfoliating is also really good um, for circulation as well so extra bonus when you're done exfoliating you will want to shave Make sure you just get rid of any body hair that you don't want. And the reason for that is, again, you want a blank slate, right? And you don't want any sort of extra fuzz hanging around that that self tanner can sort of stick to and kind of like mess off, mess up your flawless application. So make sure that you shave, get rid of all your body hair that you want to get rid of. So we're starting with that blank slate. I also do the same process for my face. So I will use an exfoliant on my face. It's kind of like a microdermabrasia type of product. Definitely available at Target, very affordable. And again, it really just sort of lets you get down to that blank slate, gets rid of any sort of like dead skin or old makeup or lotions, whatever serums that are left there. You definitely, again, want to get all of that off, strip that off of your body, off of your face, and really be just very fresh and clean. Next up, I also recommend waiting. Like when you step out of the shower and you're like all fresh and clean, you're gonna think like, yes, let's get that self tanner and let's start applying it. Do not do that. Your pores are open. Your body is still like very warm. I just think you should really take like a good hour maybe to let everything cool down, let your pores kind of like close back up because otherwise what will happen is if you apply the self tanner, first of all, your body's going to be warm. So it might sort of like smear all over the place. Some parts of your body might be warmer than others. So again, you're going to get not the most consistent application happening there. And then also if your pores are open, the self tanner can sort of seep down into those pores. And I've had this happen before where when it does that, once you sort of like shower off afterwards, you're, you've got like these little speckle spots and it's not like cute freckles on your face. You have, you can basically like see your pores and you really don't want that. So give yourself time, read a book, do whatever you got to do, but make sure that you wait at least an hour after stepping out of the shower to let your pores close up and your body cool down. This would also be the perfect time to apply any sort of very, very light lotion that you might need. I apply it to areas of my body that might wind up grabbing more of the self tanner product. So think of places like your wrists, your elbows, knees, ankles, any sort of rush, 
like rough patches that you might have. Don't apply a ton of lotion. I try to not use one that's got a lot of heavy oils in it or like a very thick, like don't use a body butter. You wanna use something that's a little bit lighter just to basically moisturize it a little bit but not create a film on top of your body. Now once your body's all cooled down, it is time to apply the self tanner. Get your favorite self tanner. There's tons of them out on the market. You're honestly probably gonna have to try a few to figure out which one has got the best tone or color for you. The one that I'm using today is a St. Moritz. It is in the dark color. I really like a nice deep dark tan, um, but it did take me a few tries to find this one. It often depends on if you have warm undertones or cool undertones. Um, so just try a bunch. You know, you might wanna go online, look at some recommendations, um, but just don't be afraid to sort of try some. Them. This one I feel like has got a good medium color that can like be great for anybody. So I would say give it a shot. If you're a little bit afraid of the darker color, they definitely have lighter variations available. It is also a mousse, um, which I like. It tends to like spread very easily over the body. You can also find lotions. I find that lotions are best if you are a beginner. It gives you a little bit more control and I think it's a little bit more forgiving because lotions have a longer dry time. Whereas mousse, when you put it on, you really have to work quickly. Make sure you get it in the spots that you want it because it will dry down rather quickly. Now when we're applying the product, I have two types of application techniques that I would recommend. Number one is a glove. Uh, number two would be a mitt. Gloves readily available. A lot of times people like to use those disposable latex gloves. I would not recommend those. Instead, I would use, they're more like thicker reusable gloves. These I think are actually the Mr. Clean brand um, that I found. And what I like about them is that they've got little grippies on them. They've got um, like some texture on the palm of the hands. And I love that because I just find that it helps you grip the product and move it around and place it where you want it. Whereas when I've got those disposable latex gloves, things sort of like slip all over the place and I feel like I don't have a lot of control of the product. So if gloves are your thing, make sure you get some that have got like those grippies on the palm. You'll thank me, I promise you. If you wanna go the mitt route, which for a mousse, I definitely recommend going the mitt route. You can do the gloves, but I think the mitt is easier and I think it's a little bit more foolproof. Mitts are readily available. Again, you can find them anywhere. They do soak up a little bit more of the product, but I find that it's easier for a beginner to do the application process. And in general, application is pretty much the same. Like you put it on the glove or on the mitt, and you spread it all over the body. But you really do want to pay close attention to make sure that you're spreading as evenly as possible. Sometimes I'll even close my eyes and just kind of feel like, okay, is there any spot that feels a little bit like warmer or cooler or like it doesn't have the product on it? And make sure you go back and check that area. You can also, you know, do this in front of a mirror so you can really like, you know, check your back, like check your under your arms, um, any of those places that maybe aren't in your immediate line of sight. Um, so you can make sure that you've got smooth, even coverage everywhere. Also, if possible, natural light is best because I just feel like you see more of the imperfections. You see more of like if you missed a spot or if something just isn't rubbed in. Um, rubbed in like the best way, right? Like, so use natural light if you can, but otherwise in your bathroom, you'll be totally fine. When it comes to areas that, kind of similar to the areas where we applied a little bit more lotion, you know, to like your wrist or your knees or your ankles, areas that might grab more color. I would also say this could be areas that might have little wrinklies in them, like the tops of my feet, like, you know, I've got like little wrinklies there. Um, I've got like little wrinklies here. You really want to be careful with those areas. So while I can spread on a ton of product here on my arms, when it gets to my wrist, I ease up on the, on the pressure. I'll go really light and easy and I'll even sort of like skim over the top a bit just to basically not get into every little nook and cranny. If you try to get into every little crease of your knuckle, <laughs> when you're done, you will regret it. <laughs> Trust me, you will regret it because what's gonna happen is when you wash the stuff off later, you're gonna see all those little creases. It will accentuate the wrinkles. So apply less pressure and less product in those areas. You can always apply more later, but it's gonna be really hard to get it off. Another great tip would be to use a brush. So I've got like a fluffy, do I have it here? I do. 
like a fluffy makeup brush. This is great if you want to be really delicate and detailed on those areas. I use this on the tops of my feet, the sides of my feet. I also use it around my wrist. I find that it's easier to build up the product if I want. It also takes off some of the product as well. So if this brush is dry and I feel like I got a lot of stuff happening here, I'll either just like come in with a towel and kind of rub some of it off, or I can use this brush and it'll just like pick some of it off. I also use this for my face. I just feel like it gives a really even coverage. Also my neck, you know, you want to make sure that you get as even as possible. And like when it comes to your face and your neck, I feel like if you wear makeup anyways, you've got a little bit of forgiveness there in terms of like, if your face is like a shade lighter than the rest of your body, who cares, right? Like the makeup's going to even stuff out and nobody's going to point it out. But like, if you try to cram a ton of product on your face, like it, it will it will not be good go lighter like there are I'm, I'm trying to think but there are no words like don't put a ton on your face don't put a ton on like these little like creasy kind of areas go really light use a brush <laughs> quick tip if you have areas of your body that you really just think like the product's gonna get into those creases um, or there's you know areas that tend to touch and you're really concerned about it use a little bit of baby powder and just dust it on like after you put the tanner on think of it as like a setting powder right just dust it on let it dry that way you know that nothing's rubbing or chafing and sort of moving that product around finally after you've applied everything you feel like it's on it's in all the right spots you've used your your brush and you're you're painting like a picasso here you feel good you're like yes i've got it pause okay like do not put clothes back on like there's times where i will literally just hang out in the bathroom for a while and just kind of air out a little bit um put a robe on i would not suggest wearing a white robe if you can find a black robe. They've got them available anywhere. It's like, I don't see them in the store, but you can find it on Amazon. You can find it online. A black robe would be great. Um, but you just need to give your body time to dry down without like, like don't be like bending, you know, cause it's going to stick and it'll start to remove product. You don't want to be doing that. You just sort of want to air out and like let everything dry down for, I would say at least 20 minutes before you put on clothing. I then tend to put on kind of like loose fitting loungewear, loose pajamas. I like to do this at night. That way I've got a ton of time while I'm sleeping for the product to actually work its magic and have the tan create. But I would definitely say you want to let that product dry down. You want to then put on loose pajamas and then go to bed. And when you wake up in the morning, your your first inclination is probably gonna be like, oh, that's really dark. Or you might like it, right? You might like it that dark, but hop in the shower. And this product, I didn't mention it earlier, but this product has a color indicator in it. And what that means is when you put it on, it's dark where you put it on. Not all self tanners have that. Don't use those. Like, just don't use those. Use one that's got a color indicator. But what you will find is in the morning when you jump in the shower, some of that color indicator is going to wash off. You'll see it go down the drain. It's no big deal. The rest of it, like your body will be the amazing bronze goddess that you were hoping for. If you find yourself in a situation where maybe you've got a couple little patches or things just look a little funky in one area or another, the brush is your friend. Again, just squirt some of the product on the brush, go really, really light, and kind of just go over those spots, and it'll all sort of even out. Now, when I'm tanning my face, I do not use this product on my face. I made that mistake one time. I will never make that mistake again. There's a reason why some tanning products have um, certain ones that say for your body and others that say for your face. I used this once on my face. Don't, don't do it. Instead, I use those like water, like water drops. They're tanning drops. They're clear tanning drops that you mix in with your facial moisturizer. I'll link everything below. I use two drops, put it in with my moisturizer, moisturize everything, and then again, go back over it with the brush. That is what will give me the most flawless application. I also go a little bit lighter in areas that tend to grab. So I tend to grab a little bit more here and here. Um, sometimes I'll grab a little bit more on these sides too. I also have hyperpigmentation over there. That's another reason why I did not like to use this St. Moritz stuff. Um, 
on my face because when I did, not only did it not apply um, smoothly, it accentuated every single pore and I have larger pores around my nose. It also accentuated my melasma and my hyperpigmentation. It made everything look worse. So yeah, like don't, don't use this for your face. I find that a tanner like this looks great for about, I don't know, six days or so. By day seven, you're gonna notice it start to slough off in the shower when you're just doing your regular exfoliation um, and showering. And so at that point in time, you might wanna start thinking about starting fresh or doing a new coat or sort of like you're doing this whole routine over. But I definitely find that for like a good six days, it looks amazing. That is it. I really hope that you found this video helpful. Maybe you learned something new, maybe you got a new tip or trick that you forgot about or you've never tried. Um, I'm also always interested in how other people apply these particular type of products. I've been doing this for years, but I'm telling you I'm a forever learner and if you've got something that I have not mentioned in this video, please comment below. Whether it's a product, a tool, a technique, whatever, please let me know. Again, all of these products will be listed below if you're interested in any of them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and until next time, see ya.